Hi, fifth graders. It's Mrs. Lamorne again, and today we're going to be doing Unit 5, Lesson 20, Products in the Hundredths Place. Our learning goal today is to multiply the tenths by tenths. What do you know about these expressions? Well, I know that, get my pen out here, 1 times 1 tenth is going to be 1 tenth because anything times one is itself, right? So I know that to be true. One tenth times one tenth, I can think of that as fractions, right? So this would be equivalent to this fraction times this fraction, which is going to be one one hundredth. And we write that as a decimal as zero and zero one, one hundredth. Okay. See if they ask us any questions about that. Can you find the value of one-tenth times one-tenth? Well, we just did, didn't we? We just did. Okay, here we have some other ones. Find the value of each expression. Explain or show your reasoning. Use the grids if they are helpful. Okay, so this first one is three-tenths, or sorry, two times three-tenths, or three-tenths two times, right? So I could um, draw that. I know that it's going to be two groups of three-tenths. So two groups of three-tenths would look like this. Here's a tenth, tenth, and tenth. And I have two groups of that. One, two, three. So here's my first group and my second group. So I think it's going to be six-tenths, right? Six-tenths. But then I have B, and B says that... Um, Two tenths times three tenths. Two tenths times three tenths. Well, I remember when I was doing area, I could do two tenths on one side and three tenths on the other, right? I could put one number over here and a number over here and then multiply it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put my two tenths here. And I'm going to color these two in to represent two tenths. I know it looks like two hundredths, but if I colored it all in, it would be two tenths, right? And over here, it's three tenths. So I'm going to make a rectangle. So, two tenths, I made a rectangle that has a length of three tenths and a width of two tenths, and it is six pieces, and they are hundredths, so that's six hundredths. Six hundredths. So, here's B number two. Number two says, Karen says that two tenths times four tenths is eight tenths. Do you agree? Well, I don't agree because I'm looking at B, and when I did two tenths times three tenths, I got six tenths, six hundredths, not tenths, right? So I think that if I were going to do this one, I can use this board right here to do that. I could do, it has to be smaller than eight tenths, right? So I could do two tenths and four tenths, and again, I'm going to do the same method that I did over here. I'm going to color in two here and then four across. And so that would be eight hundredths, not eight tenths, right? It's got to be smaller than eight tenths. So I, I can fill out that gray grid, and it would be eight hundredths. Okay, let's move on. So we don't agree with Kieran, and we did draw this on the last page, right? Here's my two tenths, and here's my four tenths. And so we know that it's going to be eight hundredths altogether. Eight hundredths altogether. How did you know that the shaded region has an area of eight hundredths square? Because there are eight small squares, and each square, small square, is a hundredth, right? And we could think of it like this, right? Two times four is eight. 2 times 4 is 8, and then they're each in the tenths place, and remember 1 tenth times 1 tenth is 1 hundredth. We saw that in the warm-up, right? So if I multiply this times this, then I know it's going to be 8 hundredths. 8 hundredths. Okay, let's see what else they ask us. How does the diagram show that equation? Again, 
we have two tenths over here, two tenths over here, and four tenths up there. And each one of these squares, two times four is the square root of eight, and each one is one hundredth of the whole square. And it's complicated because I, I, in my head, I'm thinking that two tenths would be this whole thing, right? The whole row. But they only want this right here to represent that whole row. And here they only want this right here to represent the four tenths, right? So it's going to be eight hundredths. And the way that the reason that is, is because this is the same as saying two times four is eight times, here's a tenth and a tenth. And what's a tenth times a tenth? That's a hundredth. Okay, so it has to be eight hundredths and not eight or eight tenths. Okay, I hope that clarified that for you. Okay, let's move on and try to do these in the same way. Your teacher might give you some grid paper to help you do this, um, and that might be helpful. But we could also think of this as, right, we could also think, just like in the, the synthesis of the last one, we could also think of this as 18 times 4, and that would be 32, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7. And then we could take that 72 and multiply it times 10, a tenth and a tenth. And we already remember that a tenth times a tenth is a hundredth. So I'm going to multiply this times one hundredth. And so the answer is going to be 72 hundredths. Okay? All right, I can do the same thing for B. So this was A. So I'm going to just little box that right there. And here's B. I can do 25 times 6 and figure that out. That's 30. And this is 12 plus 3 is 15. So it's 150. It's a 0. 150. And then I have a tenth and a tenth. That means I'm going to have to move that decimal 1, 2. Right? So it's like saying 150 times 1 hundredth. If I do that, it's 150 hundredths, which is 1.5 or 1 and 5 tenths. Okay, I hope that's clear. Again, we can do 38 times 7. 7 times 8 is 56. That's 21 plus 5 is 26. And then I have a tenth. So I'm going to move it 1, and then I'm going to move it again, 2, right? So it's like two, saying 266 times a tenth and a tenth times one tenth times one tenth, which we already know is a hundredth. So that would be moving that to so that we end in the hundredth place. Okay, I hope that's clear. Um, I'm starting to see a pattern here, right? If I have two decimal places in the numbers that I'm multiplying, I'm going to have two decimal places in the answer. I'm going to have two decimal places in the answer for each one of them. So that, that makes sense to me. All right, so number two, it says, how are the products the same and how are they different? All three products are going to have the same digits, aren't they? So let's do 74 times 6. 6 times 4 is 24. 42 plus 2 is 44, right? I think that's right. Yes. So all three of these are going to have the same product or same digits in the product, 444. Four, four. This one is going to have 44, but it's going to have one-tenth times one-tenth, so I'm going to move that decimal one place. In this one, I'm going to have to move it two places because I have decimals in both of them. So that's going to be one-tenth times one-tenth, which is one-hundredth, right? So all three products have the same digits. In the first one, they're whole numbers, so the product was a whole number. In the second one, it's a decimal and a whole number, and the product is the same as the whole number product except that it's tenths. The third one is a product of two decimals. So product is, again, the same as the whole number product, but it's that many hundredths. So we have three different ones there. Okay, let's see what they ask us to do next. Let's look at the different ways we found 
1 and 8 tenths times 4 tenths. So you're going to talk about the different ways that you guys found it in class. Let's see what they have here. This one drew a picture, right? So I can see that I have 4 tenths on this side. And over here, I have a 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 tenths over here. Okay, so we could draw a picture to find 1 and 8 tenths, couldn't we? How does the diagram show it? Well, I just showed you that. How does the diagram show 18 times 4 times 1 hundredth? That's a good question. So I have 18 across here, right? I have 10 here and 8 here, and then I have 4 down here. So it shows 18 times 4, and if we counted every single one of these, we would get the answer, right? So there's 10 times 4, that's 40 in this square. And then 8 times 4 is 32. So altogether, I have 72 small squares shaded. But then, right, I have, there are small squares, so there are hundredths. So if I moved all of this down here, I would have 72. So that's 40, 50, 60, 70. All of this would be shaded in, plus these two. So how many hundredths are shaded in? 72 hundredths, or 72 small squares. Okay, here we have another one. How can you use whole number product to find the decimal products? Well, again, we did that here, didn't we? We did 74 times 6. And 74 times 6, what was that again? 24, 42, 44, 4, 444. And then this one has one place value, or a tenth, so it's going to be 44 and 4 tenths. This one has two tenths, so that makes 100, right? Two place values that I have to move the answer around. So you see that this one's a whole number. Over here, I had to move that decimal one time, to be, have a tenth in it, and this one has two tenths. With two, a tenth times a tenth is a hundredth, so one, two to make hundredths. Don't I have that? That's how I got that. Okay, Let's see what else they ask us. All right, today we found products of decimals using diagrams and thinking about place value. We have 45. 4 and 5 tenths times 8 and 1 tenths, and they did 40, 45 times 1 tenth. That equals the 4 and 5 tenths, doesn't it? Right? So this equals this, get a different color, and this equals this. Those are the same things, aren't they? So we could say 45 times 81 times 1 tenth times 1 tenth, which we know is a 100th, or 100th. One hundredth, like that. How do we know this is true? I just talked about that. All right. And we could rewrite it this way. This is what I just did, right? So 45 times 81 times a hundredth. How do we know this is true? How is this helpful for finding the value of 4 and 5 tenths times 8 and 1 tenth? If we change the order of the factors in the expression, 45 times 1 tenth and 81 times 1 tenth, we get 45 times 81 times 1 tenth, 1 tenth, and that's equal to 45 times 81 times 1 hundredth. I can just find the whole number product and then say we have that many hundredths, couldn't I? So I could just say 45, whoops, 45 times 81, and then whatever that product is, make it hundredths. All right, let's see what the cool down has in store for us. Oh, good, they gave us some grids to draw. So I have 3 tenths times 6 tenths. And remember, this is the same as saying 3 times 1 tenth plus 3, or times 3 times 6 times. That's a 6, not a 3, Miss Lemoyne. Let's get that right. I'm making a mess of this page. There we go. All right, times 6 times... One tenth. So I can just say 3 times 6 is 18 and then make it hundredths, right? Because this is ten, 1 tenth times 1 tenth is a hundredth. I could also draw it out. So 3 tenths 
times six tenths, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then color all that in is going to be 18 hundredths. Okay. All right. For the same thing, I'm going to have one and three tenths. So one and three tenths over here and six tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we make that a rectangle. So this is six tenths. I could also say 13 times six. That's 18. That's 78. 78, right? And then times one tenth times one tenth. And we know that this is 78 times one hundredth. So it's going to be 78 hundredths. All right, boys and girls, thank you for joining me for lesson 20. I hope you like and subscribe and join us next time for lesson 21.